My name is Sandra Steingraber. I'm an author and a biologist and a mother and a cancer survivor. And I'm a native of central Illinois. I was born in Champaign, raised in Pekin, educated in Bloomington Normal. And now I live in upstate New York, which is a state not so different from downstate Illinois. It's a state with a big sky and an agricultural economy, but it's, it's a densely populated state as well. So I feel at home in upstate New York because I grew up in downstate Illinois. You know, Illinois is a kind of iconic state, and it is a place where it is very heavily industrialized. It's also a place that is the number one producer of soybeans in the nation. And so what happens in Illinois is kind of bellwether for the rest of the nation. So the debate that's happening around fracking here is a debate that's being watched all across the nation. And what we see when we watch it is an abdication of democracy itself. And so here we have a regulatory bill that looks as of tonight like it's going to tip forward and be voted into law. And it was a bill that was uh, sort of in violation of the whole spirit of Illinois as I understood it as an Illinois school child, right? Was, was decided by special interests um, behind closed doors a group of industry folks, some compromise-oriented environmental groups, under the direction of our state's attorney general, hammered out rules for one of the most accident-prone industries that has ever existed. An industry exempt from federal laws um, that is a kind of outlaw enterprise that uses our land as its factory floor. And so the rules that will govern the behavior of this industry were decided by a handful of people who, surprisingly enough, know very little about fracking. As far as we can see from the conversations we've had in, here in Springfield in the last couple of days, those who will be deciding whether these rules make sense have never actually spent any time out in the fracking fields of America, have never actually visited a drilling and fracking operation. And so the question becomes, if these laws are going to stand, if the people of Illinois are going to allow their communities to become a colony for the oil and gas industry whose behavior will be dictated by rules that were made up by them and a handful of people who don't actually know a lot about fracking, in the absence of any public hearings in the absence of any citizen comments, in the absence of science. No scientists weighed in on these rules. No physicians. The public health community has not done that. And, and to me as a native Illinoisan, it, it seems um, not in keeping with how we make big decisions in the state. There's a very bad narrative emerging from this regulatory bill, and, and, and should it pass and be touted as a, a model for the nation, we're in a really kind of dangerous situation. And I think that's, it's a story that's going to have to be dismantled, right? Because yes, this regulatory bill is, is a model, um, but it's a model for undemocratic decision making. It's a model for anti-scientific decision making. It's a model for essentially incoherence, I think. Most fundamentally, it's incoherent. And that's because We've rolled out this industry across the land, um, right in, in people's communities, right? So drilling and fracking operations going in right next to people's homes, right next to their churches, right next to their schools. And we, don't, we haven't even identified yet, as scientists, what the exposures are to people. We know a few things. We know that flare stacks uh, release large amounts of formaldehyde and also ozone creating substances. We know a lot about uh, the ability of ozone to create, let's say, asthma in children. But there are things inside the bedrock that are liberated along with the gas that we barely understand. Right? There's some, sometimes radon comes up with the gas, sometimes benzene in prodigious amounts. In other words, there's a lot of stuff trapped down there under the shale. And when we use our precious freshwater resources as a sledgehammer to smash apart our bedrock, treating it like a pinata, a lot of stuff comes out, and not just methane. And so we haven't identified what all those things are because the industry shrouds itself in veils of secrecy and they won't 
tell us their trade secret ingredients, uh, then we don't know what people are being exposed to, both from the bedrock itself and from the oil and gas industry who's using trade secret chemicals. And so if we don't know those things, we don't know what people are being exposed to in what quantities, by what routes of exposure. We don't know the effect of the chemical mixtures. We don't know what it means to breathe in crummy air and at the same time be exposed to some heavy metals and at the same time um, be exposed to some you know, fracking fluid. And because we don't know these things, if we promulgate regulations in the absence of knowledge, what exactly are we regulating? If we're claiming that we're successfully mitigating risks below some kind of agreed upon acceptable threshold level, and we don't know what we're mitigating, what exactly are we saying? So essentially, this regulatory bill is the emperor with no clothes. And, and, and that's what we have to say, right? Um, it, it, you can't say that these regulations are sufficient because you haven't even identified what all the risks are. So that's the first thing. The second thing is no scientists have weighed in on this. No doctors, nurses, public health officials. And so who are the experts who understand public health, who understand how a baby's brain gets wired together and understands how a molecule of lead or mercury can sabotage brain development. Where were those people? What voice did they have? You know, where are the people who understand how an embryo implants in the endometrial lining of a woman during the second week of pregnancy um, and when the chemical signals that make that implantation possible are interfered with, you end up with miscarriage. We know that toluene contributes to human miscarriage through that route. We know that toluene comes out of wellheads. So where are the people who understand reproductive toxicology? Where were they in the room? They weren't. They weren't there. Nobody was. <laughs> Just the industry and a handful of compromise-oriented lawyers ma made these decisions. And so I think the, the narrative that is going to have to be torn apart should this law tip forward is that in no way is this a model for good. It's a model for how not to do things. And, and I think that's what we in the grassroots community, in the abolitionist anti-fracking community, are going to be saying, and we're going to be saying it very forcefully.